So a couple of things, um, just real quick before we jump in with, by the way, we need to defeat both of those assembly bills. There's no doubt in my mind CAR will do that. If you paid any attention to what Manfred was referring to on those, the AB 1000 and AB 6 something, I don't know where Paul Herrera is, that, that's bad news that needs to go away. Um, so a bunch of other things. There is a survey question up there. It's on the original link. Go ahead and you, if you want to answer, hey, what do you think about this? We only have three questions. It's very simple. You can do them on your phone. We'll compare some answers um, after the fact. So I thought we'd start with, I thought we'd talk a little bit more about this to begin with. I just added this to my presentation last night. It's real time, but I think this is worthy of a little bit of discussion because unless you're really following this, this shit is unbelievable, okay? Absolutely. Whether or not it's going to be an economic catastrophe or a meltdown, we can talk about that later. Um, but let's, let's point this out a little bit. Everybody, Signature Bank, right? You guys with me on Signature Bank? They're one of the banks that failed over the last, over the weekend. The gentleman up front or up, upper left-hand corner, recognize him. His name's on top if you can't see it. Who is that? That's Barney Frank. Who's the guys behind or below that? That's Christopher Dodd and Barney Frank. Um, and what did Christopher Dodd and Barney Frank do? They wrote Dodd-Frank, which is this over here, the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act, which came out of the financial crisis in 08, which was supposed to protect the banks and make sure this shit didn't happen. Okay, why do I bring that up? Because Barney Frank was on the board of directors at Signature Bank. Now, I'm not being political here, so for those of you guys, well, Lance is going on a Republican rant. Guys, that ain't that. That should never happen. How is it possible that the person whose name is on the financial crisis fix from 2008 on the bill sits on a board of directors at a bank that got taken over? That's ridiculous. And the fact that that's not in the news all day, every day, and that's being looked at is nonsense to me. But it gets better, okay? We've got the SVB, the Silicon Valley Bank, right? Who's that? That's Greg Becker. Greg Becker sat on the San Francisco board of directors at the Fed. You guys hear that? He was on the Fed board up until last Friday when they pulled him off. If you go to the Fed's website right now and you search the San Francisco Fed, he ain't there anymore. If you would search it on Friday morning, he was there. You gotta be kidding me, guys. So at any rate, this, this scares me more than anything else because I'm not really sure we have competent people that know what, I mean, I always assume when I got in this business that there's a lot of smart people that are in government and making these decisions and taking care of business and, and we could kind of trust them. What was the thing that the Mark Twain quote um, that, that um, Thornburg put up there about, you know, fool me or whatever? That, this, if this doesn't terrify us, if for no other reason, again, this is my rant and then I'll be done. We are being led and decisions are being made by completely incompetent people. I'll stop short of corrupt. But this, this, how can this man who sits on the board of the Fed for San Francisco be on the, the president and CEO of that bank that fails? Based upon what? Why did these banks fail, by the way? We're being told why they failed. Well, well yeah, but they're being, they failed because of Fed policy right? Fed policy. This son of a bitch is on the, he's on the board making Fed policy and he can't adjust accordingly. It is maddening. It's absolutely maddening to me. Okay, so I'm done. Enough of that. I wasn't even going to do that before. So we're going to talk a little bit about interest rates. Um, this is supposed to be funny. So just go with this in the theme of funny, not serious. How about these rising interest rates? It's crazy. It's making it tough for people to buy houses. Well, yeah, well, it's always confusing to me because if the interest rates are rising, but it's tougher to buy a house. Does that mean that so many people are more interested in a house? And so that's why it's harder to buy a house? And how do they even determine interest rates? Like, how many people are interested? I think the Fed does it, right? Yeah. Do they do a survey? They don't ask. They just tell us what's up. I've never been asked. No, I wouldn't even know what to say. I'd be right. super confused. 
Anyway, um, you, if you like that, you can thank my son, Drake. Drake sent that to me. So, hey, do, bring the stage lights down. I know, Adam, you can't see me, but my graphics need to be seen. So, yeah, thank you. That's a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about interest rates. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about this guy. Um, he's been mentioned a little bit in Thornburg's presentation. Uh, guys, I have never spent more time paying attention to the Federal Reserve than I have in the last couple of years. I guess we've been ignoring them. Interest rates, by the way, interest rates have been ridiculously, artificially too low for too long. This was bound to happen. This is unsustainable nonsense. But you would have thought that the smart people in the room would have kind of gradually worked us out of this, started this process a little earlier. But to go from 3% basically to 7% in 14, 15 months, something's going to break. So again, he, you know, Chris beat up on him a little bit. There's a lot of reasons to beat up on him. So what is he doing? He's fighting inflation. I got it. I get it. I know the argument. This pain is better than runaway inflation. I understand that. Um, so, but again, I just think the policy, the way this has been implemented, the timing of the way this has been implemented, the monetary policy that Chris Thornburg talked about, pumping in trillions and trillions of dollars. I think it was five or six trillion dollars to fix a one trillion dollar deficit. It's ridiculous. This is coming from somebody who received PPP and EIDL and all the rest of that shit. Just like many of you in this room, first time I've ever taken a check from the government. First time ever ever. I haven't had a W-2 job since I was 19 years old, okay? So maybe I'm part of the problem, but we're fighting inflation to the, you know, to, to what? This is a, what is this, a year ago? Yeah. So this is one year ago, basically 4%. This is now, rates have improved a little bit. By the way, what's the bond market doing today? Are we up, down? I don't know. I've been in a coma for the last four hours. So at any rate, we've had some interesting times. So we've got some interest rate charts. That's a ridiculous chart. Um, some of you in the room know um, Rick Hoffman. Rick Hoffman, spoke, he's a big coal banker guy, a great guy. Rick Hoffman spoke at our conference a year and a half ago, and we were talking about mortgage and mortgage. I'm losing, losing my voice, by the way. Um, eviction moratoriums. And basically, again, we were at that period of time during COVID where you didn't have to make your mortgage. You could have gone on another one of these kind of mortgage moratoriums. And Rick Hoffman kept saying, you know, well, what does this look like when we come out of this? And he kept saying over and over, he says, we've never done it before. We've never done it. Are the house lights up? Or am I just walking in the middle of it? Um, we've never done this before. I don't know what it's going to look like. We've never done this before. We have never almost tripled interest rates from an artificially low number to a number which is not a horrible number, by the way. I am not making an argument that a 6.5% interest rate is horrible. When I got in the business, they were 10. Um, if I had gotten in the business a few years earlier, they were 15 or 16, or some of you have been around here where they were 17 or 18. There's nothing wrong with a 10% interest rate, okay? But there's nothing wrong with a 7% interest rate. But to go from 3 to 7 in 18 months is absolute shock to the system, a shock to the consumers. And again, if it needed to be done, fine. I guess the argument is it needed to be done. Um, this is from the old Google machine, which by the way, going back and looking at this, this is from Optimal Blue. This is a public site. This is just an index. This was as of two days ago. I don't know if you could get a 7 or 6.5% interest rate today. Um, we'll let some of the lenders come up and tell you that. But in theory, it's an index. They, like, this, is, this was taken off of Google the exact same time. $500,000 loan, 20% down. Yeah, decent credit, but not great credit, 7%. I don't know if we're at 7. I don't know if we're at 7.5. Um, depends on who you are, right? So we got an interest rate issue. I think we're all aware of that. So um, if you follow my stuff, and I encourage you guys to follow my stuff, there's a press conference that Jerome Powell did on June 15th of last year. So what is that? Let's call it nine, 10 months ago. And I am a firm believer in when people tell you something, believe them, all right? So if, if, if Steve tells me something and he looks me in the eye and says, Lance, this is what I'm gonna do, well, why would I believe he's gonna do anything different than what he tells me he's gonna do? So on, this is a clip from the June 15th press conference 10 months ago. There's two different clips. Here is the question that's being asked. So here we Mark go. Mark Hamrick with Bankrate. Um, wonder what your assessment is about the outlook for the housing market given the uh, years long increase in home prices and now the sharp rise in mortgage rates. And all that, of course, given the uh, heightened sensitivity around the housing market, given the fact that it was a trigger for the great financial crisis over a decade ago. Thank you. 
Okay, so the next clip is going to be his answer. I did edit it a little bit, but if you think I edited it to make him look better or worse, I didn't. You can watch this. It, it actually will be on the link. The entire press conference is an hour long. I watched it four times because that's what I am. Um, it's the last five minutes of the press conference. And when, he, when Mr. Powell, Chairman Powell, says thank you at the end, it truly is, I'm dropping the mic, press conference over. Here is Chairman Powell's response to that question. Low, so we saw prices moving up very, very uh, strongly for the last couple of years. So that changes now, and rates have moved up. We're well aware that rate, mortgage rates have moved up a lot, and you're, you're, you know, you're seeing a changing housing market. We're watching it to see what will happen. How much will it really affect residential investment? Not really sure. Uh, what will, how much will it affect housing prices? You know, not really sure. It's, uh, I mean, obviously we're watching that quite carefully. You would think over time, I mean, so there's a, there's a tremendous amount of supply in the housing market of unfinished homes. And as those come online, whereas the, the, the supply of finished homes, the inventory of finished homes that are for sale is incredibly low, historically low. So that it's still a very tight market. So prices may keep going up for a while, even in a world where rates are, are up. So it's a complicated situation. We watch it very carefully. Um, you know, I, I would say if you're if you're a home buyer, somebody or a young person looking to buy a home, you, you need a bit of a reset. You, we, we need to get back to a place where, where supply and demand are, are back uh, together and where inflation is down low again and mortgages are, mortgage rates are low again. So this this will be a process whereby we ideally we 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 do our work in a way that where the housing market settles in a new place and housing availability and, and credit availability are at appropriate levels. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you like that? Is that the first time most of you probably saw that quote? That, that's nine months old. That's 10 months old. I watched it live. I damn near shit my pants. I'm, I'm just like, watched it live. And I, I, so he says exactly what he's going to do. Here's a somewhat of a quote. We need a bit of a reset. Housing market's going to settle into a new place. Okay. That was in June. Who felt we had already been in a process prior to June? How many, sell, how many people sell real estate in this room or mortgages? Okay. We started feeling it in April, okay, and May and June, which is why I, pardon the language, you know, um, we started feeling like, okay, all right, we got to do it. We got to do it. It's going to be painful. Got to get it, do it. But I think we've been questioning the policy. Is this the right way to do it? And then quite honestly, been questioning, okay, do we got a, we got a late start. So now, and as much as Chris came up, and I think generally people would say that's a positive message that uh, Dr. Thornburg delivered. It kind of made you feel good. Who feels good in this room right now about the real estate market? Okay, I love that. I love that. Okay. But from a transaction standpoint, even if you got your hands up and you're positive, I got that. I'm with you. And by the way, I do too. I do too. Don't misunderstand. This is one of those moments where I could be misunderstood. Okay? But let's face it, man. We're, this, is, this is an interesting marketplace. So I love that quote. Actually, I don't like that quote. So here's the reset. The problem is, is we don't know what he wants to reset to. So what are we resetting to? Are we resetting to pre-COVID or where are we going to reset to? So you tell me we're going to reset. Fine. Just tell me what the, what the end game is. Um, kind of like I think Chris Thornburg said, Hey, relax, property values have come down 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10%. But that's okay because you're still up 30%. I got it. I got it. But we still have some, we still have some definitions uh, to do. Last August. Oh, I'm going to back up. I love this lady. She was on CNBC a minute ago. This, to me, absolutely nails the issue that we have right now, at least as it relates to real estate. She's talking more globally. But here we go. Let's listen to uh, Last Sheldon. August, uh, when Chair Powell said that the Fed was going to aggressively use its tools to try to equilibrate demand and supply, that it would bring pain to households and businesses. And the way his model was supposed to work was that to reduce aggregate demand, the Fed would raise interest rates, and that would cause reduced economic growth, and that would cause more unemployment, or as, as he likes to say, softer labor conditions. But I think what's happening now is we see people going back to work productively, Growth has been decent, record low unemployment, demand is sustained, and, and instead of questioning the assumptions of the model, which goes to the very constructs the Fed has about the relationship between economic growth, inflation, and unemployment, they're doubling down 
And so their formula is really collapsing into an axiom of, of the higher the interest rate, the lower the inflation. And that could be exactly wrong because I think they're affecting supply more than demand. So it could prove damaging rather than helpful to resolving inflation. Is that true when it comes to real estate? Damn straight. And if, that, that is 100% true. This interest rate increase has not impacted demand. Yeah, sure it has. Who's got a listing that's got more than two, three, four, five offers on it right now? The rest of you don't have listings then. So, you know, I mean, if you have a listing, I mean, I get text all day long, 39 offers, overpriced, all that, it's the whole nine yards. Um, it's happening. We definitely have a supply problem, which is where I want to focus the next 10 minutes of my comments or so, and then we're going to bring up the panel and we're going to close it out. Ooh, geez, we might go a little after one. We'll see how it goes. So if you guys haven't heard me, I've been trying to develop a theme. I don't know if it's clear. I've used the word transactions many, many times. Um, we have a transaction problem right now, Okay. I see it in the eyes of my agents, in myself, of my lenders, of my escrow officers, of my title people. Don't kid yourself. I can see it. When I have mortgage folks show up in my office at a sales meeting that I haven't seen in three or four years, I know there's a problem. And if you're in the mortgage business, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When things are tough, you come back into the office. You're bird dogging for business. We have some transaction issues. Um, so what does that mean? This is, a, this is a thing that I do every now and then. Um, actually, I do it every month. So if you think there's some value in here, then check me out. So let's just a really quick look back just to show how good we are at predicting these things. This was October 30, 13th, 2020. This is from the California Association of Realtors. This is the last economic forecast and slide that Leslie Appleton Young put out. I like Leslie. This is not meant to be a slam at Leslie. A lot of people got this wrong. So this was their forecast for 2021, and we were get basically going to see a median price increase of 1.3%. This is the statewide, but a little low, huh? But who, but who in this room said we were going to see a 20% increase? Nobody. And the year before, who said we were going to see a 20% increase in 2020 during covid Nobody, but that's basically what we saw. Um, by the way, just uh, while we're kind of here, that projection, actually, let's go to the other slide. The other slide makes it a little bit clearer. This is the current forecast. Now, when I say current, this was put out, um, whatever that is, four or five months ago. It's probably been updated by then. This was put out by Jordan Levine. I like Jordan. Jordan and Chris used to work together. They were partners for a period of time. So this is what we have now. It's circled over here. This is their forecast for this year. 7.2% reduction in unit sales. So according to CR in California, we're going to sell 7.2%. So I think your job in this room, if you're mortgage title, escrow, whatever, is how are you going to, what are you going to do? For those of those people that said, yeah, I'm happy. Everything's cool. I like you. You're a five percenter. So you're going to sit back and say, I'm not going to lose 7.2% of my production. That's bullshit. I got to go figure out who I'm going to steal it from these people. Okay. Or how am I going to, which by the way is, is easier to do than you might think. Cause all of these people out doing zero to one transactions a year, they're dead meat. Right? So if you just get rid of those people that are selling properties to their sister and their mom and their brother and their aunt and all the rest, this is no time for the sister and the brother and the aunt and the mother to be dealing with their niece who just got their real estate license. So that's your, that's your target. That's your target, at least in part. But then they're also saying, which is pretty bold, CAR comes out and says we're going to see an 8.8% reduction in property values in 2023. I can't remember the last time I saw CAR do that, which ironically, they should have been saying that back in 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10. They never once did. They never once said we were going to see a reduction in property value. So the fact that they're willing to do it, I do give them credit. Having said that, these things are very, very hard to forecast. I'm no actually, I'm not an economist. I'm just, I just look at this stuff and I try to make it a business plan accordingly. Uh, and I, by the way, I didn't call for a 20% price appreciation in 2020 or 2023 either. I thought that was crazy. So I'm going to blow through these very, very fast. Um, it's normally would take me a half hour. I'm going to go through these in five, six minutes and then we're going to bring the panel up and we're going to close this day out. So this is some real time stuff. This is why I said when Mike Marconi with Orange Coast Title was up here, Orange Coast Title, no joke. They can tell you how many, how many title or, op, orders they opened yesterday, which we all can do that, but then they can tell you how that compares to last week, to last month, to last year, to two years ago, to three years ago, and they have it all mapped out. Um, data, it's big stuff. This is from um, CRMLS. Art Carter produced this, and basically what you're looking at is new listings. Do we have an inventory problem? We have an inventory problem. 
okay? I don't like this next chart because this next chart is on its side and this next chart needs to be put on its, on its other side. Um, do we have a volume problem? Well, of course we have a volume problem. We have a volume problem because we're not selling as many houses. Ashley told you, you know, nationally, um, Cobalt Banker and the troops, 30% reduction. I'm going to show you sales, unit sales. Well, when you sell for 30% fewer houses, and again, this, this chart's crazy. Um, you know, this is peak, and this is like November, December of last year. Sell, these are selling less houses. I don't know who puts a chart like that on its side. Um, but anyway, we're less houses to sell, therefore less volume. Make sense? Now, again, is it, oh, Lance, why are you doing this? This is so sad. This is so depressing. No, it's not. This is information that you all need to take and put into your business plan so you can go out, quite honestly, and put the person next to you out of business. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be. We don't talk about that agent to agent. How long will it take you guys to find an article from Inman that says the ABC Mortgage Company just went out of business? The ABC Mortgage Company just laid off this many people. This particular real estate company is losing the X amount of money. This is real shit. This is not a sales rally, by the way. I know you guys come here to get pumped up. This is not the place for that. At least from a standpoint of, well, actually, it probably is. Those people who raise their hand over there, you're going to get pumped up because you're going to take this data, you're going to go out, and you're going to crush with it. And that's what I would expect you to do. So that's CRMLS data. This is some stuff that I pull up. I'm going to pull up four counties, LA, Riverside, San Bernardino, and Orange, very quickly. And, you're, and by the way, if I just pulled up one county, they all look exactly the same. They don't look materially different. So what is the first thing we're going to look at? We're going to look at price. Ooh, I don't know how that looks out in the audience. I can barely see it here. So that's a 24-month run. A um, little difficult to see from where I'm standing. This is peak to trough, okay? Peak to current, I should say. So in L.A. County, property values peaked in April. That's February. What is that? I think that says 11%. I got a chart that shows it a little bit better. 11% drop from peak, okay? So for those of you who are looking for a downturn in values, if you're in the Nick Manfredi camp that we might have a problem, there it is. That's real. That's real. So in LA County, um, I think that's 11. I'll get a better chart. Um, this is, wait a minute, maybe that was 13. Yeah, that's 13. So the price, this is Kristen Thornburg's point. Two years ago in LA County, 755. 850, 12 months ago, oops, 795. It is what it is. It's fine. Reli and honestly, I don't think that's a gigantic problem. I know some people have some concerns about that. Um, supply and demand. This is really the issue that we have right now. The red line is, or the red bars, red line is inventory. We have nothing to sell. Bottom line, we just don't have anything, else, anything to sell. That's an absorption rate. Again, the chart doesn't project very well. I've got clean charts you can take a look at. So what are we looking at? We can look at these other ones for time standpoint. I'm just going to look at these. 25% fewer sales a year ago, 31% fewer sales than two years ago. What are you guys going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Okay, these are real numbers, all right? So same exact charts, a little faster, Riverside County. So we're home. There's our two-year chart appreciation. Here's our peak to current. Peak to current. Peak for most areas is somewhere between April, May, and June. Um, so, and by the way, this is only single family residences. There's, this is single family houses. There's no condos in here. There's no land. There's no nothing. Just single families. Um, what is that? Um, well, it's down 3.1% the last 12 months. This is the one that I'm looking at. This is your peak to current. So from June, July of last year till now, Riverside County's down 7.5%. Supply and demand looks just like LA County. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go back to that real quick. I don't know how it ran. From where I'm standing, I can barely see it. So if we do this, I'll break in my neck. You see those peaks up at the top? That's, that's where inventory peaked. So we did best, I'll have a lot less inventory in the pipeline than we had before and a lot less sales. 21% fewer sales than a year ago, 22%. I'm going to skip past San Bernardino. The numbers are similar. Um, you guys can take a look at this, and these charts are all available on the, on the link, and you can take a peek at them um, along with a few extras. I will end on our friends from Orange County. Uh, I don't do a lot of stuff in Orange County, but if it feels, Lance, it's different. Your numbers are wrong. It's different. Well, if you're in Orange County, it feels different. Why does it feel different? Because the peak to current is 11%. Lower than it was 12 months ago, or from peak, whatever that was. I think it was May or June. And this is why it really feels different if you're in Orange County. They're selling 44% fewer homes than they did two years ago. Okay? 
and 27% fewer homes than they did, which frankly goes almost perfect. Where did Ashley go? Oh my gosh, I'm on, I want to do my show for Ashley, and she leaves when I get up here? Oh, goodness gracious. So she's getting ready for the panel. Okay, so at any rate, so take this data, do with it what you want. I am obsessed with it, guys. I am obsessed with this stuff, okay? Now, I may not be the most successful real estate broker in the Cobalt Banker franchise or maybe even in the Inland Empire, but I'll tell you this, I've been doing this for 35 years. Same company, same thing, same business model, every market, up, down, left, right, sideways, and I'm going to be here, well, I don't know, I'm going to be around for another 35 years, but I'm going to be doing this for a while because I'm constantly planning it out. So that's my message to you guys is plan this out. Hopefully we can see if we can do something with these transactions. And we're going to get ready. Oh, our panel, if your panelist is, is, is already, you guys can come out.